Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm going to let people uh, trickle in here before we get started. Great. I'm glad to have you all here. It looks like we're, we're getting to that point where we're almost full. Um, thank you all so much for joining. I wish this could be in person, a little more face to face, um, but Oh, we got someone raising their hand already. Um, but uh, I think this is the best we can do to, to talk about this, the project, um, and also to answer any questions that folks might have um, about the project. Um, so the point of today is to talk about the two-year grant project that we have received funding for, um, and also talk about uh, the qual what we're looking for when we're, we're looking for a couple states to, to partner with us on this, and uh, answer any questions. For the time being, there's a Q and A um, uh, section on the bottom of your Zoom. That um, please put your questions in there, and we will get to them um, as it goes through. Try to keep your questions as general as possible. Um, it's not going to be interesting to folks if we're answering uh, really particular questions. So. Um, Really glad for the interest, really glad to have a lot of folks here. And again, uh, feel free to talk in the chat and also uh, put your questions in the Q&A. Um, next slide, please. Um, just some housekeeping stuff. Um, for those of you who don't know, I imagine most of you know who Consumer Voice is. We advocate for public policies that support quality of life. Um, excuse me, quality of care and quality of life responsive to consumers' needs in all long-term care settings. Uh, we like to power and educate consumers and families. We train and support individuals and groups that empower and advocate for consumers of long-term care, and we promote the critical role of direct care workers in best practices and quality care delivery. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this program is being recorded. There's not going to be a lot of slides. In fact, it'll be mostly me talking and answering your questions. Um, as I said earlier, please use the Q&A feature for questions for me. Um, uh, Lori uh, Smetanka was going to be here today, but she couldn't, um, and she sends her apologies. So you'll be speaking just uh, with me today. You, as I said, you can use the chat feature to uh, 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 talk amongst each other, share ideas and talk, but please, if you want to answer questions answered, put them in the Q&A. Um, and we don't have an evaluation for this, um, uh, so uh, you do not have to uh, complete a, a, a evaluation question when, the webinar, when, when it's over. And links to resources will be posted in the chat box and will be posted in the Consumer Voice website, including a copy of this um, this. Uh, Webinar. Okay, next slide, please. Um, and I think I introduced myself, but let's uh, let's go from the top. Um, my name is Sam Brooks. I'm the director of public policy at the National Consumer Voice for Quality Long Term Care. Um, last um, last week or the week before, um, we issued a request for. Uh, proposals or an application to work with us on a new project. And we got a lot of questions. Um, um, uh, we, we got a lot of questions about um, about the project. And we figured rather than just answering all kinds of individual questions, we could have a, a call and um, get folks um, in, um, in all in one spot and try to answer as many questions as, as you can. Um, all right, looks like we're having some connection problems that have, have been fixed. So we're really excited about this project, and I thought I'd give a bit of an overview. Um, in, in our words, sometimes it's it's better explained verbally than it is on paper. Um, as most of you know, um, I imagine, uh, Consumer Voice is... Um, been very, very um, loud and talkative and persistent in the past, well, for, for a long time, but particularly in the past several years about nursing home finances. Um, it, they were uh, calling for increased transparency in finances, calling for better uh, accountability for how nursing homes spend money. Um, 
this is something that we've called for for decades, but really has gained some more significant traction over the past years, in part due to, frankly, um, bad players in um, the uh, nursing home industry, such as private equity, um, uh, but also the COVID pandemic really brought it to the forefront how poor long-term nursing home care is in, in the United States. Um, and for those of us, many of us already knew that, but for many in the United States, um, I think it was uh, something that they uh, didn't know or purposely didn't know or didn't know. But regardless, there's been a lot of attention to it, particularly from the media. And so we have been doing a lot of data work trying to show that there's billions and billions of dollars going unaccounted for each year in various um, financial practices, including related party transactions, and that the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, is not fulfilling its regulatory um, duty to require better disclosure of how that money is spent. Um, and uh, if you listen to us or watch the stuff we issue, we're probably driving you nuts because we talk about it all the time. But frankly, um, this is um, uh, just as important as a staffing standard in many ways, if not more important, um, because as we know, um, when the money isn't going towards care, care suffers. But the irony there is that it allows the um, the nursing home industry to can, to say, well, we can't provide any better care. We can't hire people um, because there just isn't enough money. And our position is, well, we want to know where the money is and we want to know um, how it's being used. Um, so we've been advocating on the federal and the state level um, or trying to help advocates at the state level, at least. And some, there's been some really glimmers of hope. Um, around transparency on the state level, include, beginning, I believe, with um, uh, California, which passed SB 650 um, in 2020 or 21, which required better cons consolidated cost reporting. States like uh, New Jersey are taking it up, Pennsylvania, New York, C Connecticut, um, across the country, and, and, and in particular, uh, law enforcement is interest, interested as well. Um, so there's this real somewhat momentum at the state level. Um, the state essentially is doing what the federal government doesn't um, and uh, really making an end around um, the complacency and um, uh, of the federal government in this area. So we got funding for a two-year project, and this project will be to work with two states, um, and those states have yet to been, be determined. That's partly why we're here today. And Consumer Voice will be providing significant, what we call technical support to those states. Um, and by states, I mean organizations within those states, your organizations. Um, that technical support will come in a variety of um, forms, um, including data, data analysis, um, we have access to data that you don't, and we have access to analysis that you don't. And that's not because you guys aren't cool and awesome. It's just because we have um, um, good friends. Um, so we'll be using that data. We'll also be talking about advocacy strategies, policy ideas. Whom do we need to be talking to in your state um, to, um, to make these changes possible? Because after two years, what we want, ideally what we want is we want a law, we want a regulation or some kind of policy change that has resulted in the requirement that when nursing homes report on their Medicaid cost reports, they're doing consolidated cost reporting. They're reporting everything. So we're able to see where the money is going. So um, that means that for two years, well, less than two years now, because it started in January, um, you'll be working, um, someone within your organization would be working with Consumer Voice, we'd be collaborating, but you would essentially be the boots on the ground. The person, the organization, and the person running the program in the state would be responsible for doing the boots on the ground work. Um, we would be backing you up, developing strategies, um, and um, if necessary, meeting with with policyholders as well. But really, this is about empowering, finding ways. We, we're in a situation now where we have access to data and analysis we've never had before. And we've also been able to, consumer voice through, through our work, have been able to test different ways to gauge the efficacy of how we use this data. And we want to, God, I'm sounding like an infomercial here, but, um, but we want to be able to share that experience with you as well to say, hey, this is what we found to be effective. Um, so it's, we're really excited about it. Um, 
The particulars of the project are in the, uh, the call for proposals. The link to that is right there. Um, this is only a two-year project. Um, it does not come with funding um, to the um, state. The state would have to provide um, its own worker um, um, or a person responsible for the program. We don't suspect that it's this would take close to the amount of time necessary to hire a new person. This isn't a 40 hour job, um, um, although it could transform into that eventually. Um, but um, what this is, is setting up a, a relationship, a collaborative relationship where we're providing as much information and support to, to you so that you may um, uh, advocate in a way that gets cost report transparency. And once we've done that, we can work with other states. We can share that model. We can share what's effective. We can we can um, work together to try to get the more states to adopt it. Because after you've had enough states adopting these um, uh, these these measures, you have all the nursing homes because the nursing homes really um, they're they're these op owners and operators um, own homes across the country. Um, so I'm not going to talk too much about the goals of what the substantive goals of the project. Those are the goals. I'm not going to get into the um, minutia and, um, you know, what a, what a cost report is today or um, what consolidated cost reporting is. This is more about to answer your questions about what it would, what it would, what your organization would need or, or to do or um, any questions you might have to, to participate. Um, you can apply through the application form um, that is um, linked um, at the, at those, at that link. And you can also, and it's due by March 15th, uh, 2024. Um, so again, we're very excited. Uh, we are uh, eager to start working on this. We will be bringing on Consumer Voice. We'll be bringing on a dedicated staff member to manage this project. You probably, you might have seen that we're hiring for that. And uh, so uh, the questions about, you know, what, what kind of states in, in, the, in the RFP, we lay out who really the type of states we're looking to work with, you know, folks that um, are ready and have the staff to, to the willing and able to, to get right to this work. Um, but we lay out some other things as well. What, what is it like in your um, state right now? Um, what are the uh, what are the barriers to cost reform and what are the what are the um, some of the things that could support it cost report reform so uh, lots of good stuff um, we're very excited um, now again I wish I could see all of you so we could I could read some of your faces but I can't so why don't I try to answer um, some questions here um, and um, we'll go from there what I'm going to do is just go down through um, some of the, the questions that we have um, uh, in the Q&A section. So Kathleen asks, will, will your choice be influenced by the size of the state or the progress they've already made towards introducing? Well, I think I just um, answered that question in part. Um, uh, it The size of the state, uh, I hadn't even thought of that. Um, but we, um, there's going to be a variety of things that we will think about, uh, and and it's important to point out a couple things here as well. Is this, you know, there's there's probably a bit of a spectrum when it comes to um, the uh, the getting cost report um, transparency. You know, maybe on one end is none, you know, and the other end is California or something similar to that. And all of you are going to be on your on the various part places in the spectrum um, when it when it when it comes to these things. Um, so um, it's certainly uh, things like that will go into the calculus when we're thinking about um, states uh, that we want to work with. But you also want to think about, you know, has something happened recently in the press? Is there initiative um, um, across the state or in that state's legislature to um, uh, to uh, excuse me, um, to, to adopt some of these, to adopt some of these reforms. So really what we're looking for, um, the important things to look for are in the RFP, the, the things that we're concentrated on. Um, Sarah asked, um, can you say more about the timeline? Did the two years begin? Yeah, it's the two years began last month. Um, I, I don't think it's carved in absolute stone, um, but we're going now. Um, um, so, you know, th that's why we're moving quickly. Um, so you can do the math. If it started last month, um, 
you can um, uh, do the math of when, when it would be done. Um, Sarah then asked, will you require a budget from applicants showing things like a budget for local state time paid with the funds were raised in our state to work on this project? I mean, we're not going to ask for, for you to show us your budget. Um, it's necessary. We're going to just ask you to have a plan. I mean, those states that are chosen will have will be required to document their ability um, to, to dedicate um, the staff to it. And that's that. Um, uh, I, we're not in, we're not going to look into your budget, um, uh, but we'll probably would look at, you know, what has that person been doing? Are they a new hire? Things like that. But we're not going to be getting so granular that um, I'll be auditing your cost reports. Um, next question. Um, uh, I'm going to skip skip this next one. It's it, well, um, it, this is just really about the project. Um, just reading some of these questions. So I, 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 I'm not, this, this isn't about the, um, the substantive um, uh, nature of the project. So there's some questions like, when nursing homes say they do not have budget for more staff or better food, how can we find out what their budget actually is? Um, that's the whole goal of this project, um, to determine um, just how much money is uh, in the system, what it's being spent on, and um, how, you know, where it's being spent, and again, how it's being spent. So that that's the goal of this project. Um, and yes, for-profit nursing home owners are required to open their books. Um, so many of you know, we have access to cost report data, other data that we can put together, and we can really get down to the facility level type of data here that shows just what a facility is doing or purporting to do when it comes to this data work. Um, and that's what we're going to be offering for our support. Um, when, when, when legislators and policy makers see the, the data that we have, it's very persuasive. Um, uh, so um, we're, that's why we want to be able to work with you to develop really effective, because you're going to know who to talk to often in your state, um, and we're going to need to, ex to um, take advantage of those um, relationships as well. <laughs> Aaron Pettigrew, uh, is it worth applying if this project would never lead to transparency in our state due to the overwhelming power of the industry? Right. Never say never. But that's a great question. I mean, that's something you need to think about. I mean, um, if you don't think this would be effective, um, why why um, use resources um, in your system team um, uh, to, to fight that to fight that battle? Um, I mean, I think that's something you have to think about. Um, however, it's also it also sounds like um, it's something that we thought about this a lot, Aaron. So we thought about my how I advocate for transparency in um, Pennsylvania or Philadelphia might be very different than um, how I would advocate, say, in Montana or Idaho. Um, but that's the great thing about data. It's just data and you can, you tell the story around it. So we've started to work with different ways to talk to different people about data. You know, some people it's about residents. They can't tolerate the idea of residents being harmed. The others, it's about fiscal, fiscal responsibility. Um, who cares how the residents are being treated as long as it's cheap and you know money isn't being wasted. So you really have to adapt your message to that. So I'd say never say never, um, but certainly um, we like to take advantage of a, a, the, a state where we certainly see likelihood of um, getting some kind of reform um, passed. Well, that's a great question. Arlene asked, will the pro project solely analyze CMS reports or will it integrate the state cost reports? I imagine it'll be a little bit of both. What I mean, what we have access to now are the CMS reports. Um, they tend to match up in, most times with the state reports in my experience, but when there's easy access to state reports, um, we, I'm certain we'll use them. And frankly, we'll need to use them um, um, to 
just to figure out our baseline. Where is the state in achieving um, on their cost reports? Because that's where all the information is going to be. Um, so the analysis will be of both reports, um, but the, the ultimate goal here will be to get that, that state cost report. That's a great question. Get that state cost report changed. That's another great question. How much time do you foresee this project taking from us as individuals if our state is chosen as a participant? Well, remember, these are organizations, you know, we're going to have organizational applicants, we imagine. I mean, individuals are certainly welcome to apply. Um, but as we envisioned, envisioned it, it would be an organization that would apply and partner with us. Um, it depends. It really is going to depend. Some of us, you know, I know some states and advocates in some states, they can see the finish line of this. You know, they're, um, they're trying to pull it over. And then there's other, I haven't even started out of the gate. Um, so, of course, the, the amount of time that will need to be invested is going to be very dependent upon uh, the, the applicant state themselves. Um, but we don't see this as a full-time position or maybe even a half-time position, but it will depend upon um, the uh, the uh, capacity of the state where they are um, right now in cost report, you know, and, and there's many ways to, to look at how far along you are. Um, you know, access to reports, have you been talking about it to the press? Have you been talking about on the Hill? Is this an issue that is has been prominent? Um, so, yeah, I mean, again, I, it's a great it's a great question. And I just can't answer it 100 percent. But we don't see this as um, someone who's going to be doing 40 hours a week on this. Um, it's a nice project um, that could wrap into someone else's work. Um, so I hope that, um, and if any of these don't answer your, um, questions, please chime up in the chat. Will volunteers be considered for this task? I'm not sure exactly what this means. Um, um, you just have to be apply. I mean, you don't have to be an organization. You can be a, a person and, um, but, uh, again, we're not paying anyone. Um, we're not paying you. Um, and you're not paying us. Um, there's no exchange of money. Um, we will be hiring someone internally at Consumer Voice to address this project. Um, but anything, uh, any of the work that you did would be up to you. Um, and um, uh, as long as it, of course, complied with uh, any work plan that we, 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 we put together. If an individual suspects a nursing home financial wrongdoing, to whom can the individual report this? It's a great question. Um, I mean, the 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 question, the answer you uh, uh, the answer you you um, we generally give is you know the Department of Health, but they probably won't know how to do it. Um, um, I think the only people that are really effective on this right now, in in many instances, are the media or um, uh, local law enforcement. Um, we've been doing a lot of work with the media on this and also with attorneys general. Um, uh, so sometimes the media love these types of stories where it's um, financial wrongdoing. Um, uh, but technically on paper, it would you would report it to um, your local health organization. Um, your lo excuse me, you could have your local survey organization, your Department of Health. You can also report it to the Office of Inspector General, um, which um, was oversees or investigates fraud and abuse in the um, um, federal government, um, particularly in, um, the Department of Health and Human Services. Um, from um, here's a comment from Sharon. I know my, the nursing home I live in really cutting things sharply. They're cutting supplies down to even less than half. Staff are leaving due pay cuts, being told they have to do double shifts. I just had to buy my own chucks, shampoo, and soap. Um, right. And, and this is why we're doing this work. Um, where is that money going? Uh, this is a, it's a good this is a good question. I came on late. Um, can states apply as a coalition of various organizations, or does one organization have to apply? I mean, I, I, it, the, one organization doesn't have to apply, but I think what it, we we would need one point person, and we 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 would need some kind of organizational structure. Um, uh, that doesn't mean you have to form a new organization, but if you were working with East and West, East and West Group, we would want the num the names and contact information from that. Um, 
Again, the RFP goes over as long as you can meet the requirements of the RFP, uh, we're going to be pretty, um, pretty liberal in um, how we how we look at um, applicants. Um, we want to achieve our goals. Um, and um, we're that, so we're going to evaluate applicants on a case by case basis with looking at a variety of inputs um, and not one will certainly not one I'm sorry will be definitive. Um, someone here said, who asked the question about living in a state where the industry may negatively affect the legislature in their state? I'd love to brainstorm with that person. Um, uh, yes, that was Aaron. I mean, trust me, in every state, the industry is very powerful. Um, um, it's, it's very powerful, and we, we know that's who we're going up against. So, um that was Aaron. I'm, I'm so, yeah, you too are welcome to connect. Can a recently completed state report be integrated in this project, or does the state report need to be developed? Oh, that's a great question. So, I mean, what we're trying to do. Remember that what we're what we're trying to do here. Um, Arlene's question was, um, uh, and this is a great question because it, it crosses a variety of things, and it really talks about. The, the, the project. Can a recently completed state report be integrated in this project? Does the state report need to be developed during the grant period? Which I think the question is, is if we already have developed a, um, a state report, um, a, a better state report, um, does that disqualify us? No, not necessarily. And um, because remember, even once you get to the table and once you um, convince whomever you need to convince to do some change, you still got to write the regulation. You still got to make the cost report. You still have to um, write the law. And just because you've made it doesn't mean you're there. Because then what happens is you, you get someone to say, yeah, we'll write a law. And they write a law or regulation, and then the industry gets to it. And the law and the regulation becomes about something totally opposite. So our goal here, Arlene, in a way, is to walk folks through, even folks who are close, um, to make sure that that language in that law, that language in that regulation, or whatever, is, is going to achieve the transparency we need. Um, because we are, have come up with you know, we have the regulatory language we think is necessary. We have the legislative language that we think is necessary. And we have the ideas around the uh, uh, increased cost reporting that we think are necessary. I mean, of course, they will need to be adapted to the states. Um, but it, this gives you an idea. This doesn't need to be a project that just starts like we're going to start on day one and all, all of those things. This could be, you know, you you have a bill in the legislature and um, you can't quite get it across. And how can we help you do that? What data can we give you to show this person in that legislature, you know, John Smith, that the nursing homes in his district are siphoning off this money? And that's how granular we can go. So we're able to target the policymakers and the, the 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 stakeholders to that level. Um, so um, that's what we're trying to do here. It is a holistic approach that doesn't have to begin in one place. We can come in in the middle, um, but it, it's really going to depend upon um, if if the organization can meet the the requirements of the RFP. Um, Patricia has a question. Are you looking for higher numbers of participants for the training sessions? Would we be allowed to invite beyond the actual partnerships and the application? What's the reporting look like? Uh, it's a lot of questions. Well, um, well, these training sessions, I mean, it, it, there could be a variety of, of, of training sessions. We could be doing training sessions for you, just how to go through a cost report, what to do. Um, there could be training sessions that could be deducted by you, by for stakeholders on uh, in in your state. Um, certainly, it would depend. I think on the the um, beyond. You know, would would we be allowed to invite beyond the actual partnerships in the application? I mean, I I imagine so. Um, reporting, we're going to be meeting reg pr pretty frequently. Um, um to to talk there will be reporting it's not going to be monthly reporting i think it's annual um or every six months i'm not sure but we will be meeting monthly just to discuss progress um i will be although we're hiring someone i'll be the one running the 
um, it, it primarily responsible for it. So you'll be seeing a lot of me. So if you don't want to see a lot of me, don't apply. Um, and uh, uh, this shouldn't be a huge time suck. Um, we know what we need to do. We just need um, to help you guys, help you guys do it. Uh, sure, Kathy. Kathy asks if we could share that language with us, even if we're not one of your two chosen states. Certainly, certainly. Uh, but the language itself needs to be understood, and that language it needs to be explained, and it needs to be adapted to a certain state that, that your state's going to have existing um, um, laws and regulations. So, um, just having the language isn't enough. But we're I'm I'm happy to share some of that. Next question: uh, Once a state is chosen. Will the organization in charge be made public? So two advocates or a small group offer this? Certainly. Um, um, yeah, I mean, we we, we want to make it public and we want to encourage you to make it. one of the things we're going to be looking at is can you build more support on the ground? Um, can you um, uh, get others to become part of a coalition or um, support the work that you're doing? So, yes, that's going to be one of the things that we think are critical is um, – momentum building and um, grassroots um, um, advocacy um, to, uh, to uh, you know, broaden support and broaden the, the, the coalition of groups going for it. And we will need to identify just what your state needs. Does your state need a, a law? Does it need a regulation? So there's a lot that's going to go into this. Um, and uh, we strongly think that the broader the support that your organization has and that our organization, I mean, we rely on all of you, right, um, to, to um to do our work as well. So, um, yeah, uh, the more the merrier. Uh, let me keep going here. Uh, does consumer voice have data which indicates which states are less likely to have legislating supporting financial accountability that is subpoenaed by the industry? We don't. So the question is, sorry, I shouldn't lag off there because other people... Does consumer voice have data which indicates which states are less likely to have legislation supporting financial accountability and transparency that is impeded by the industry and lobbying that counters efforts to make inroads to better care for residents? I mean, uh, I think the the better question are which states are less or more um, which states are likely to have the legislation. I think the industry is very um uh, uh powerful in every state even in the states where there's some um, great advocates doing great work and they can they can tell you that um i we do not know which states are less likely or more likely um to uh to to do something like this um, but i think you'd be surprised um if you can convince someone in kansas or in indiana or in tennessee that um, a bunch of you know guys from um, New Jersey are stealing from their their states through private equity funds. It's pretty it's pretty powerful stuff, um, and it does move it does move people. So who knows? Um, but I think we go into every state assuming that um, there's going to be significant significant. We're going to be fighting an uphill battle. Um, uh, at what degree that the 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 incline is is not always clear. Even if we do not apply or are not selected for this project, can we get information from Consumer Voice about how to get, get financial information and data from nursing homes in our states? Yes, I mean that's something. Frankly, that's something that we have tried to do over and over again. Just about two or three weeks ago, we had a we did a uh, webinar on how to do this. It's on our website. Um, I try to help as much as I can when folks reach out to me. Um, but remember, if you're going to do something in your state, oftentimes you're only going to get one stab at it um, and you want to do it right. Um, so we, you know, we're going to be learning over the next couple of years what is effective um, advocacy uh, and what works. Um, so, that, that no way am I discouraging other folks from working towards this, but we're going to be learning. Part of this project is about getting information and learning about um, how to advocate for these types of reforms. So, what 
hopefully we will not only be sharing the how to get the data, but how to get this done in your state. Um, Jane, great to hear that this project will target policymakers and the stakeholders. As a, oh, that's just a nice comment. Thank you. Of course, Devan, can we apply with another organization, a joint project? Of course, yes. I mean, there would just need to be um, that uh, um, clear uh, that the requirements that are in the RFP would just need to be met. Um, but we thought of that, you know. When a state is chosen, will it cover different areas of the state? Yes, Sharon, it will cover all. I mean, this is this when when we're choosing a state here, we're we're hoping for statewide reform. Um, um, you know, these are Medicaid cost reports, so every state um, would every facility in the state would be required to file one of these. Um, um, so it would. Um, the advocacy that you'd be doing would likely be in the capital of your state um, with the legislator or wherever your Medicaid um, uh, cost um, analysis folks are in, in your state. So, um, Jamie, can you explain how states can make changes in policy in lieu of the federal government making changes from the top down? Well, I don't want to get too much into that today. That's a little more beyond the project um, that that's getting into the project. Um, but the short answer is consolidated cost reporting. Um, and um, that's what the goal of this project will be to get states um, to implement consolidated cost reporting, consolidated cost reporting. I mean, it's generally it's it, it's taken on a myth of mythic a term of it's become of mythic proportions what it exactly means i'm not sure that everybody agrees on but the idea of consolidated cost reporting is that all the all the nursing homes and all the buildings um and all the holding companies and all the owners and all the various satellites that hover around nursing homes um have to report um their uh their, their profits and losses. Um, when that money goes into a, a related party, we shouldn't the, the 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 accountability shouldn't end there. We want to see the cost reports from that um, related party, and we want to see how much money is going back further and further. Um, and uh, so uh, those that's the goal. That's what we're trying to do, and that's why we're um, trying to convince the state, um, um, convince states to. Uh, to do that. Um, so yeah. Uh, on the topic of want to do it right, are there models of efforts that have been successful in accomplishing statewide? Yes, there are. I mean, we Tony Chickatel um, and Canner, California Advocates for Nursing Home Reform. I mean, they're their own national organization over there in California, and they effectively advocated for better transparency. But that's California, you know. Um, not saying it was easy, um, but again, those strategies may be different um, um, than the ones we use in uh, Florida or some other state like that. Um, but other advocates, particularly um, in New Jersey, we've been talking a lot with Amy Brown and um, Lloyd Brewer, who is the, the state long-term care ombudsman there, and they've just done amazing work year after year trying to get better transparency. So there are models out there, and we're developing the models ourselves as well as we um, garner um, more support from various, as we learn what is most effective in our advocacy um um uh with stakeholders um so i hope that answers somewhat that 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 question um will this project be a continuation for the future we hope so i mean part you know as with all nonprofits sometimes when we bring someone on it's based on a grant but during that time, two years, we'll be doing everything we can to make this position um, permanent. Um, we also, the person who's working, who will be holding the job, excuse me, we're trying to keep them permanent. The project itself will be two years. Um, I, I don't want to confuse the person running the project and the project itself. The project will be two years. Um, 
there could be other projects though, because there's so many more states. Um, but for now, this is a two year project focused on two states. Um, and we'll see where we go um, from there when that's done. The person we bring on, we also hope will, you'll, you'll come to know and they will be a long lasting member of the consumer voice policy team. Um, so we're hoping we're seeing this as an expansion um, and that um, in two years we will have a, another policy person and we'll have cost trans report transparency. Let me see if there's any new one. Can a local regional agency apply as lead on the grant? E yeah, of course, even if they're not a statewide agency, but they do advocate. Yes, you don't have to be a statewide agency. You don't have, you, what we're looking for is your ability, your organization's ability to affect change in your state. Um, your organization's ability to identify um, who we need to be talking to. And by we, I mean you, you're going to be the talkers. Well, I mean, we're, we're certainly going to help prepare you and answer questions and provide data and arguments. Um, but that's what it's going to be about. Who, who is the most effective team? So um, that, um, uh, well, I, I can't say it wouldn't necessarily, necessarily play some role in the decision, um, it certainly isn't a bar to applying and um, uh, potentially being selected. Um, can federal legislation implement nursing home financial disclosure reforms for all states, or must those forms come at the state level? Yes, they could. Um, uh, and arguably, they don't even need legislation. Um, um, and uh, they just need to exercise their regulatory authority. Um, so certainly uh, the, the reforms we need would be ideal on the federal level, um, but that doesn't mean we don't fight on the state level. Um, and states can always re regulate more. They can't regulate less than, uh, you know, they can make the regulations more strict. They can't make them less. So many states, as you see, have now started to do that. Um, but what we want to do ultimately is have federal cost report um, uh, reform. And we do see this project as a way to achieve that. Um, when we start getting these cost reports and doing the analysis and showing it and also getting the data from it, um, we hope it would awake the sleeping giant that is CMS and um, cause them to, to, to uh, uh, implement some reforms. All right. Did I get through all of them? You guys must be tired of listening to me. Uh, Jamie, I just want to acknowledge your question. How will state advocates help consumer voice develop and implement state level advocacy strategies achieving increased transparency and accountability in nursing home finances ownership, which will support the Essential Caregivers Act legislation that allows electronic devices in resident rooms? It's a long question. Um, well, this isn't necessarily, this uh, obviously isn't about this Essential Caregivers Act, but you're welcome to email me and we, we could talk talk more. Other questions? Are there any other questions um, before um, we cut off? Um, the idea of this was to avoid having to um, um, uh, answer the same questions over and over. I um, hope that um, this in part did that. Um, I'm grateful to all of you. I'm grateful that for uh, so much of your interest and your fervor to be part of this. This is going to be a huge project and one that um, can uh, will not only have the, the potential for change in your state, but the potential for change um, uh, nationally. Um, someone has their hand up. I don't know what that means. You want to say something, Lori? Lori Hunter? Oh. <laughs> I gave you the floor. Um, I'm sorry. Like, I, can you hear me? Or yeah. Did you want to say something? You had your hand up. No. Maybe, 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 never mind. All right. So next slide, please. 
Um, so to connect with us, you know um, how to do it. Um, and um, But you can come to our website. Every, all of this information is on our website, or you can email us at info at the consumervoice.org. Uh, we're really excited about this project. We're really excited um, uh, that um, you guys are excited, and um, we're really going to do something here together. Um, so uh, the good thing is, is, you know, if your state is not selected, it isn't because we don't like you. It's just, it's a variety of factors, obviously, but we'll be reporting back throughout the year on the progress of the project, sharing ideas, sharing victories, sharing setbacks, because um, we are a community of advocates when it comes to this. And um, we that's a part why we're doing this project is to to help um, uh, to help all of you in the long run. So um, thank you so much for being here today. Um, look forward to getting your applications um, and we'll talk to you all very soon. Thank you.